Hello Linux fans, Rob here and welcome to Linux Quest. Today's video is going to be on the Hiri email app and I am pumped to share this with you. Uh, it solves the problem for people like myself who work with Office 365 for their job. And right now there's 60 million so or so um, Office 365 users. And I have to imagine there's several thousand, if not tens of thousands, of Linux users who have to work with Office 365 and or Exchange and would love an app that works well and pulls that all in on their Linux system. So that's what we're going to look at today. That's why I'm so excited. Now, you'll notice here that I'm running Zorn OS, and this is the latest Zorn 12.3. Uh, we'll save that for another video. I've got this loaded up on a partition. wanted to set up this sample Hiri account that uh, the Hiri team was so kind to send to me so that I could do this video. That way I'm not sharing all of my information with the rest of the world. Uh, I want to point out a couple things though quickly. I didn't realize this sale was still going. I actually was able to purchase a lifetime subscription to Hiri for 50% off. So this is not free. It's not open source. It's proprietary. It costs money, but it does an excellent job and it uh, fills the void in an area that we were kind of lacking in, you know, in the Linux sphere. Uh, let's go to pricing real quick because I just want you to see this. Hopefully by the time I post this video, you'll have close to three hours left if this looks like something you would want to purchase. So I was able to get the lifetime subscription for 60 bucks, and that includes access to updates and new features forever. Or you could go annual for, what, 17, 18 bucks here. Uh, it's going to be 50% off. Now let's go back to the product. So what it does is it, it, it covers really what I would say are the four main areas that where you'd maybe work with, say, Outlook. And they tout this as an Outlook replacement, but it's, it's more, and I think in a better way, and I'll kind of get into that. So let's jump over and take a look at Hiri. Uh, so the, the four main areas in, when you're working with Exchange or Office 365 is going to be your email, your calendar, your contacts, and your task. And that's really what Hiri encompasses. Uh, but it does it in a way that, again, is totally different from Outlook and many other email clients out there. And so at first glance, when you launch into this, this is what you're going to see. It's kind of sparse. In fact, you look at it and you go, hmm, that's kind of bland, kind of sparse. There's some spacing here that looks like, you know, that it, there's room to stretch things out. Uh, but bear with me as we get into some things and you'll see how it starts to change. Now, there's also things here that at first glance you just don't see because it's very, again, very clean. Uh, but as you get in, you start working with it. There's an area of discovery where you go, aha, that's cool. So I want to point a couple of those out. You've got search here where you could just search your email and search everything. But then you click on and you'll see that you've got tags where you could actually go in and refine your search. And it works extremely well. The other thing I'll point out, as we hover, you're just going to see a single line. That's the way it's set up by default. But you could change this. And we're going to look at those options. But you'll notice when I hover over any email, you'll get little indicators that pop up, which are various actions. So you could reply, reply all, delete right from there, pop this thing out into a separate window, which is nice because, um, let's go ahead and load the external images, and you can set that up by default as well. reason this is nice, maybe I need to pull from this information in this email as I pop over to calendar and so now you've got two windows to work in so that's the way it should be or I could print from there as well alright so moving on you'll see that as you hover along and then there's other areas of discovery that's again one of these things until you start using it you just don't see so if I bring my uh, cursor over here and I hover to the left end of any email I can immediately mark that as read or unread alright over here to the right, you're going to see your um, your folders, and you could click in, you know, junk folder or anything like that. Nothing special there. Um, you know, this is this is an area where on a lot of email systems you'll have like a drop down, like you'd see that. You could just minimize that by default. It's it's just a full list. That's fine. Over here on the left, if you wanted to jump in and just quickly compose an email, start typing. Um, subject matter here cc or blind carbon copy here you could set that up to always show uh, start typing your email here and you do have 
the ability to go in and you know, bold, italic, underline, format your font, um, add in some emojis, an attachment here. You could delete it, save it, close it, or send it all from right here in this pop-out. Just like email should work. Moving on down, you've got your inbox, which is what we're in now, and you're going to notice that this changes. And the reason is you can kind of cater Hiri to your needs, and we'll get into that with what they call skills. Next on the list, though, you've got send feedback. So if you wanted, to, you had an idea or having a problem or something like that, you could send that feedback in, and they are listening. I've been into their forums, checking some things out, and I like what's going to be happening in the future with Hiri. So we'll talk about that. Next up is a big part of what sets this app apart from other email apps, and that's the Skill Center. And this is where things start to change for you. So here you could set up the Action FYI skill just by a simple toggle, and that allows you to separate your emails using emails that you have to take action on or perhaps there's emails coming in that's just for your information. You don't have to do anything with it. It's just something you need to know about. So now when we toggle that on, you'll see here you've got Unified Inbox showing two that we have two unread. And then these are actionable or just for you know our information. So that's automatically changed as soon as we toggle that on. Next up is the dashboard. So we're going to toggle that on. If you come down to the dashboard, that serves several purposes. Number one, it's going to tell you the last time you checked your email. It's going to tell you how long to wait. And the reason behind that is they've got a philosophy there that if you're checking your email all the time, you get kind of pulled away and you're not focused in on completing tasks. It's going to show you how many emails you've worked with in a day or received in a day. It'll also show you your calendar here for today or tomorrow's events. You could launch right into your calendar from here or invite your friends. Now, I'm going to toggle that back off because it'll pop up from time to time as you're working with Heary just to let you know what's going on email wise. Next up is one that I think most of us will use and that is a task list. So we're just going to toggle that on. You'll see the changes for that in a minute. Also you've got delegate emails here. So we're going to turn that on and I love this. So if you're working with other uh, team members who are using the Heary app, you can write from within the email uh, assign a specific task to anyone that is included in that chain of emails. So very slick. The other one here, reminders, and this is a big one. Uh, you know, if you're using uh, a smartphone these days, um, just about every app now, email app now that comes out uh, or is updated includes the ability to set reminders for that specific email. There may be emails that come in that you don't need to do anything with till the following day. So you could set a reminder for that. And we'll take a look at that. Write better subject lines. So we're going to go ahead and toggle that on and we'll talk about that. We'll pop up an email. Essentially what this does is it puts your subject line at the bottom. The theory there is, is you're typing the email, you get kind of a, a formula in your mind is, okay, what's the main subject about? And it's usually uh, going to be one of those things that comes to you when you finish the email. In fact, I've thought b about this and looked back and thought, you know, how many times have I changed my subject matter when I completed the email? Because what I typed in the beginning really didn't match by the time I finished the email. So kind of brilliant. The next two here, uh, one is coming up, but uh, zero inbox. So if that's your the way you do things, you like to keep things um, down to zero emails, you can toggle this on. Um, I haven't used this yet, but I'm going to leave this off for now as well. And then coming soon is you can rate emails. And if you're in a group of people who are using Heary uh, within your company or whatever, you can anonymously rate someone's email. And that feedback is supposed to help them realize that, okay, maybe my 4,000 word email is a little too long, for example. All right, so moving on, we've toggled on some skills. And I can imagine over time that these skills are going to grow. What's great here is there may be people using this that need none of these skills. They like that sparse, clean interface and they want to focus in on their stuff and do it. Other people will use these task list or reminders and so you can cater this to your specific needs which makes it awesome. All right next up is going to be your contacts and they've done a nice job here. A lot of times in email apps you'll see contacts and things maybe the email portion's great and then you get over to the contacts and it's like yeah they you know fell apart. 
that's not the case here. Uh, I'd like to be able to see some like right click interaction or maybe you know some pop up uh, action items like you see in the email. But here, uh, what you'll see is a view pane on the right. Um, you can quickly scroll. I mean, it's it's large print. You can see everything you need to see. And again, this is all sample stuff, so there's not going to be a lot of information. But you could go in and edit. And when you go in and edit, it's just a matter of these lines will appear, and you can just start typing. So it is quick to uh, to edit. And the next up is settings. We're going to skip that. We're going to go to calendar, um, and then we'll go back into settings. Nice clean interface. You've got uh, three views here, which is work week, week, and month. And so we're going to go back. I don't know why that's taking a minute. Of course, wouldn't you know while while I'm doing videos, something like this is going to happen. All right. So maybe it was trying to pull something in there. Uh, then month, and then to uh, create an event, you'll notice this pop out here. Which is going to, you know, let you fill in the blank for all the pertinent information. You've still got format controls here. You can set up uh, location. You can do an invite. Set up reminders. Uh, add an attachment. It's really much more full featured than you think it is when you first kind of look at just this. Um, so nicely done. All right, let's jump into settings next, and then we're going to go back to the email, and you'll see some of the changes. Uh, once we've turned on some of these skills, some of the changes that have taken place. So first of all, you've got general, uh, and I've used this, so when I set mine up, um, after all of my email populated, I went in and chose optimize, and it'll take a minute or two, but uh, I, I think what it's doing is kind of indexing the database, or, or maybe it's removing some things that would slow it down, and it, it does seem to optimize it. Uh, you could check for an update here. And then we get into preferences, and uh, so these are, you know, various preferences for various parts of here. So you've got desktop notifications. Uh, you could toggle this on to show this in the system tray. So we're going to do that, or you could close the app to the system tray, and you see that pop up down here. Uh, close the conversation after sending. I always ask where to download attachments. Spell checker, and the spell checker seems to work pretty darn well. Um, then we get into accounts. Now, currently, here he only supports one account at a time, but some of that future stuff, as you get into the forums and you read, I believe it is in the works already to have multiple accounts. You could also use this slider here to set up how much is synchronizing onto your system um, or delete your account. Signature, this is great because, again, you've got formatting here. Uh, we could go in and you know bold certain parts of your signature, things like that. Out of office reply, and then we get into appearance. So right now we have high density on. Uh, we could turn on low density, and that's going to show less emails but more preview text. We're going to do that just so you could see what it looks like. There's a two pane view, and what that does is put a preview at the bottom. That's in beta now, but my understanding is again it's already in the works, so that you're going to have a preview pane on the right hand side, much like you would see in Outlook or other email programs. So I'm really excited about that. Right now, the two pane view is uh, simply preview at the bottom. So we're going to stay with low density, and then you've got a slider here. Maybe you've got a really um, high resolution screen, and and the font and the print and everything shows up, you know, kind of small. Uh, you could slide that up and scale it up. Calendar and time, so you could change the first day of the week. Set your time zone. Set your time format. Archive, so you could go in and choose which folder to use for archiving your emails, and then. I know many of you will be thrilled to see this keyboard shortcuts in place. So for all of you hardcore keyboarders out there, um, you'll be able to, to learn each of these actions. All right, so that covers the settings. So now we're going to jump back into the inbox, and you'll see how this has changed. Now you're seeing a little bit more info in the email. All right, but you'll also notice over here, this has changed. Your folders have shifted over, and now you've got a task list in place here. And there's more to the task list than meets the eye. And that is because you can set up various categories or projects under these tasks. And um, from right here, you could rename or delete these. Uh, you can also star your task. And it just all works well. So if we go in here now, uh, you'll see a snooze as you hover. 
uh, over any email, you'll see a snooze, or if you click in, you'll see that same snooze because we turned that on. And so you could, with one click, change you know to this evening, tomorrow, next week, or set up a custom date and time. Uh, and it works very, very well. This is something we've all gotten used to. You know, if it's you know, on your smartphone, most email apps now allow you to snooze an email, come back to it later, or get a reminder to come back to it later. So I think I've covered, oh, no, there's a few more things. I thought I'd covered everything. I'm trying to keep this video a little uh, condensed here because I want to get it posted so that you've still got time to go in and take advantage of the 50% off sale if this is something that's going to work for you. All right, so let's say this is an email that is actionable. I can simply drag this over into the actionable category, and now, boom, it's there. So you start your day with this setup, and you just want to go in and quickly see what you've got to take care of. You don't want to see this long list of emails here. Uh, bam, there it is. Or, again, maybe this is just something you just need to know about, but you don't need to take action on. Drag it right over and drop it. There it is. Um, you know, so I can see where this actionable thing here is the area that as long as you keep this clean, you know, you can move on and do other things. I really like the idea behind it. And when you get into the forums and you get into reading the website, you'll see that the team at Heary, they're not just like producing an app that's okay, this lets you pull in Office 365. They're taking this thing to different levels. I mean, they're getting into recommendations about how to get better workflow, you know, getting things done type mentality, uh, along with, um, you know, I think what are going to be um, additions to Heary that are really going to turn this into the go-to mail app for Linux users, even though it's paid and, you know, it's not free, it's not open source, but you're not going to hear arguments from me about that. Look, if if this allows you to use Linux full time in your work environment, for example, or from your home office, and it allows you to interact with your work emails and contacts and calendar events and everything in a way that keeps you on Linux, keeps you on an operating system that you truly enjoy using, then it's awesome. It's great because it's in a way, that's freedom. You know, it's if you want the freedom to use a paid app, you got the freedom to use a paid app. That's the way I see it. So um, I'm sure there'll be argument over that, and, and so be it. Um, but anyway, love what they're doing here, guys. Keep up the good work, Heary team, if you watch this. And uh, all right, well, I'm going to wrap things up, and uh, hopefully we'll be getting another video out here uh, maybe in a few days on the latest release of Zorn. Well, that's it, folks. As always, thank you so much for watching, and we will check you later.